Hello, in this video we're going to be taking a look at some trickier binomial expansion questions and so for this it's already going to be worth having some basic knowledge on how to calculate binomial expansions and using this formula here in the red box. So if you're not familiar with that I'll link all of the videos I've made on this stuff in the video description uh, and as usual I'm going to timestamp each part of the video so if you don't like the look of one question or it's too easy you can skip through to the next one and as a sort of general rule the questions get harder as we go through this video. So we'll take a look at the first question, where we need to find the first three terms in the expansion of 1 plus 3x all squared multiplied by or divided by 1 minus 2x all cubed. And so the first step when I've got a question like this is, I'm going to rewrite it. And the way I'm going to rewrite it is like this. I'm going to say it's 1 plus 3x all squared multiplied by 1 minus 2x to the power of negative 3. Now the reason I've done this is because now I can calculate the expansion of this first part here and then the expansion of this second part, and then multiplying them together rather than doing any dividing, which I think is just more complicated. So let's expand this first part here, this 1 plus 3x all squared. And to expand this, we don't even need to use our binomial expansion formula because it's just a binomial to the power of 2. So we're just squaring it, which is pretty easy to expand. And if we expand it, we'll get 1 plus 6x plus 9x squared. So that was really easy. Now we're just going to expand this second part, and as we have a negative power of n, so if we look up here we've got negative 3, that means this is going to be an infinite sum when we expand it, okay? And so because we're only interested in the first three terms, well that's going to be 1, or whatever the number is, plus something x, plus something x squared. So I'm only going to expand up to the x squared term, because they're the only terms I'm interested in in this expansion. And for this I am going to use the formula up here in this red box, and so we are expanding 1 minus 2x to the power of negative 3 and that's equal to well in our formula we have n equal to negative 3 and x equal to negative 2x and so it's going to be 1 plus negative 3 multiplied by negative 2x plus well we've got negative 3 multiplied by negative well 3 minus 1 so negative 4 divided by 2 factorial which is 2 multiplied by negative 2x all squared plus dot 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 because it's an infinitely long sum okay and if you want to check how I've got that you might want to write down or refer back to a formula and check it for yourself but if you use the formula that's what you would get now I'm just going to simplify that and we're going to get 1 plus 6x and for the third term we're going to get negative 3 multiplied by negative 4 well that's going to be positive 12 positive 12 divided by 2 that's going to give me 6 and we're multiplying that by negative 2x all squared so we're multiplying that by 4x squared and if we calculate that we've got 6 12 18 24 so we've got plus 24x squared plus dot 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 okay now like I said if we highlight it we've got the green part if we expanded it which is that and our purple part which I highlighted if we expanded that we would get this sum here and so now I just need to multiply those two things together okay so let me bring this part down and we can say that the original thing we needed to calculate the first three terms of is equal to, well, it's 1 plus 6x plus 9x squared multiplied by the infinite sum, so 1 plus 6x plus 24x squared plus dot dot dot, like that. And so now I'm just going to multiply each term by every other term. So we'll start off with 1 multiplied by 1. And so that's obviously 1 plus 1 multiplied by 6x, so plus 6x plus 1 multiplied by 24x squared, which is plus 24x squared. Now we're going to do the same, but with this 6x, so 6x multiplied by 1 is plus 6x. 6x multiplied by 6x is plus 36x squared. And now from here, I'm not actually going to calculate 6x multiplied by this 24x squared, because that will give me an x cubed term. And like we said at the start, we're only interested in the first three terms. And so finally, we're going to do 9x squared multiplied by 1. So we get plus 9x squared. And then, like we said, I'm not going to go any further because I'm only interested up to the x squared term. So it's plus dot, dot, dot. And so now, if we simplify this, we'll get, well, 1. Let's collect like terms. So plus, well, we've got 6x plus 6x. So plus 12x. Plus, let's collect the other like terms, x squared term. So 24x squared plus 36x squared, well that takes me to 60, and then plus 9x squared, that's plus 69x squared, plus dot dot dot. And so we could leave it like that, or we could say for the first three terms, it is approximately equal to, so if we bring this down, this here is approximately equal 
to 1 plus 12x plus 69x squared. So that was the first question. Hopefully that made sense. Let's now move on to the second one. And in this question, we need to find the first three terms again in the expansion of the square root of 1 plus 4x, all divided by 1 minus x. And we need to give the range of x for which the expansion is valid. OK, so we've got two different parts to the question. And we're going to start off by finding the first three terms. And so the way I'm going to do that is by rewriting it again. OK, and the more practice you get, you could probably do all of it in one step. But just as it's a tutorial, I'll do all of the steps. So the first step is I'm going to distribute that square root across the numerator and the denominator like this. So we've got the square root of 1 plus 4x divided by the square root of 1 minus x like this. Now, when we've got something to a square root, it's the same as putting it to the power of one half. So we could say we've got one plus four x to the power of a half divided by one minus x or to the power of a half. And like in the uh, previous example, this denominator here, well, that's the same as multiplying the numerator by one minus x to the power of negative half. So we'll do that. So one plus four x to the power of a half multiplied by one minus x to the power of a negative half. And so from here, I'm pretty much going to do the same as above. I'm going to calculate the expansion of this first part and then calculate the expansion of this second part. So we'll start off with 1 plus 4x to the power of a half, like so. And we're going to be using the formula for the binomial expansion, which is given to us. And in fact, I will bring it down for this example just so you can see where I'm getting these values from. And so in this example, we have a value of n equal to 1 half, and our x is equal to 4x. And so again, we're only interested up to our x squared term because we want the first three terms in the expansion. And so we've got 1 plus n times x, so 1 half multiplied by 4x, plus, well, n, which is 1 half, multiplied by n minus 1, so that's negative 1 half, divided by 2 factorial, which is just 2, multiplied by 4x all squared plus whatever ever other terms we had in the expansion. Now from here, we're just going to simplify this. I'm going to move it over just so I've got a bit more space for the next part. So if we simplify this, we've got 1 plus, well, 1 half multiplied by 4x. So that's just going to be plus 2x. And the third term is going to be 1 half multiplied by negative half. Well, that's going to be negative 1 fourth. Divided by 2 is negative 1 eighth. So we could write it down as we go. So we've got this first part is negative 1 eighth. And we're multiplying that by 4x all squared, which is 16x squared. And so when we uh, do negative 1 eighth multiplied by 16x squared, that's the same as negative 2x squared plus whatever other terms we have in the expansion. Now I'm going to draw a line like this, and we're going to expand the other term, this 1 minus x all to the power of a negative half. So we've got 1 minus x all to the power of negative 1 half is equal to well, again, we're going to do the same thing. So we've got 1 plus negative 1 half multiplied by negative x plus negative 1 half multiplied by negative 1 half minus 1, so negative 3 over 2, all divided by 2 factorial multiplied by negative x squared plus dot, dot, dot. And there's just a case whoops, of simplifying this. So we've got that is equal to 1, well, plus 1 half x plus so we've got negative a half multiplied by negative three over two, that is positive three over four. Dividing that by two, we've got uh, three over eight. And we're multiplying that by negative x all squared, so that's just multiplied by x squared. And so we get plus three over eight x squared, plus the other terms in the expansion. So at the start, we said that's the same as, well, if we multiplied those two things together, so now I need to multiply this by this, OK, and I'm going to move this uh, formula out of the way just so we've got a bit of space. And so we get that this original thing that we had to work out the three terms of here, if I bring it down, well, that's going to be equal to this infinite sum. So 1 plus 2x minus 2x squared plus dot, 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 multiplied by 1 plus 1 half x plus 3 over 8x squared plus dot, 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 all multiplied together. And like in the example above, remember, we're only going up to the x squared term. And so let's multiply each bit by every other bit. And if we do that, we've got 1 multiplied by 1, so 1, plus 1 multiplied by a half x, so plus 1 half x, plus 1 multiplied by 3 over 8x squared, so plus 3 over 8x squared. Then we're going to do 2x multiplied by 1, so plus 2x multiplied by 2x multiplied by 1 half x, which is just plus 1x squared. 
and then we're going to do 2x multiplied by 3 over 8x squared. Uh, and if we do that, we are going to not do that, sorry, because that will take us to an x cubed term, which we're not interested in. Like I said, we only want to go up to x squared. And then we've got negative x squared multiplied by 1, which is negative 2x squared plus dot dot dot. So now we can simplify this to get the first three terms. So we've got one plus, and then let's collect the x terms. So we've got these two. So we've got one half x plus two x. Well, that's gonna be plus five over two x. And then let's finally collect the x squared terms. So we've got these three here. So basically we wanna work out three over eight x squared, subtract x squared. So that's gonna be minus five over eight x squared plus the other terms in the expansion. And again, as we're only interested in the first three terms, we can say that this is approximately equal to one plus five over two x minus five over eight x squared. Now remember, at the start we had to calculate the range of values for which the expansion is valid. And the way this is gonna work is, well, if you haven't seen my video on it, if we take a look at the formula, okay, which is kind of getting a bit messy now, but let's see if we can make it a bit clearer. We said that for one plus x all to the power of m, it's only valid if the absolute or the modulus of x is strictly less than one, okay? And in the parts that we expanded, we had four x and negative x, okay? So let's see what happens with those two. So I'll do it up here, just because I'm running out of space. So if we're looking at the part with the pl one plus four x all to the power of a half, well, instead of the absolute value of x, we've got the absolute value of four x being less than one. Okay, and from here we could pull out the four from the absolute value or the modulus sign like this. And then we can divide both sides by four and we've got the absolute value of x is strictly less than a fourth, okay? And that would be the range of values of x that it's valid for. Let's now do the same thing, but the second part, so the absolute value of negative x is strictly less than one. And that is pretty much the exact same as the absolute value of x is less than one. So when we've got two constraints like this, we have to pick whichever one re um, restricts it m the most, okay? Because say we picked x to be um, 0.5, then that would um, be fine in this constraint, but it wouldn't be okay with this one. So we have to pick whichever one's smallest so that it fits in with both constraints. So we're gonna pick the absolute value of x is uh, strictly less than 1 fourth, and I can write that like this. Okay, let's look at this third and final example. Well, we need to find the first three terms in the expansion of x plus one, all divided by two plus x multiplied by one minus x. And so to do this one, we're gonna to need to know about partial fractions. And for this video, I'm gonna assume you can do it. If not, I will link my video on that in the description. And so the first thing is to set this equal to a, which is some constant divided by two plus x, and then add on b, which is another constant divided by one minus x. And initially I'm gonna move this formula out of the way. So now we're gonna multiply uh, both sides by the denominator of the left-hand side, and we get that x plus one is gonna be equal to a multiplied by one minus x plus b multiplied by two plus x. And now we're gonna set our values of x to eliminate one of the constants to find their value. So initially I'm gonna set x equal to positive one, and so we get one plus one is two, which is equal to, well, a multiplied by one minus one is zero, plus b multiplied by two plus one, which is three, so three uh, b. And so rearranging, we get b is equal to two over three. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to eliminate b this time, and I'm gonna set x equal to negative two. So we get negative two plus one is negative one. And then we get that that is equal to a multiplied by one minus negative two. Well, that's the same as one plus two. So we get three a and b goes to zero. And so we get that a is gonna be equal to negative one third. Pretty easy, right? So now I'm just gonna substitute those values of a and b into the partial fractions at the top. And the way I'm gonna do that is by saying that, well, this thing here that we started with is equal to a, which is negative one third, multiplied by one over two plus x, which is the same as two plus x to the power of negative one, plus b, which is two over three, multiplied by one over one minus x, which is the same as one minus x to the power of negative one. So from here, we just need to calculate the binomial expansion of these two things here, substitute them back in, and that will give us an estimate or the first three terms of the expansion. So again, I'm gonna keep this formula here because we're using it this time, and we'll start off with the expansion of two plus x to the power of negative one. Now, if we compare this to what we have in our formula, we've got a two here, but we need it to be a one to use our expansion. 
And so to make that a one, I'm gonna factorize out the two from the first two terms. And to do that, that's really easy. We just say that it's equal to two multiplied by, well, we could either divide both, uh, both terms by two or say, what do I multiply by two to take me to two? Well, one plus one half x, okay? And if you expanded that, you'd see it would be the same thing. And that's all to the power of negative one. And so now we can distribute that negative one across both of those things. So we've got two to the power of negative one. Well, that's the same as one half. Uh, multiplied by one plus one half x to the power of negative one. And now we can perform our binomial expansion. And so we've got one plus n times x. Well, in this example, n is negative one. x is one half x plus n multiplied by n minus one divided by two factorial multiplied by one half x all squared plus the other terms in the expansion. So now if we simplify this, we get one minus one half x plus well, negative one multiplied by negative two is positive two, divided by two is one. So it's one multiplied by one half x all squared. So we get plus one fourth x all squared plus dot, dot, dot. Okay, and one thing I've left out actually that I've just realized, these should all be multiplied by one half like this, okay? Like so, because I left out this one half there. Let's now multiply everything by a half and we get one half subtract one fourth x plus one over eight x squared plus dot dot dot. And that would be that expansion done. And so now we just have to expand this uh, one minus x to the power of negative one, which should be really easy. So one minus x to the power of negative one is equal to one plus n times x. So one negative one multiplied by negative x plus negative one multiplied by negative two over two factorial multiplied by negative x all squared plus dot dot dot. And so this is gonna be equal to one plus x plus x squared, okay, and you can check how that's gonna come out. So from here, we can now substitute these values that we've just calculated into this thing up here. So let's bring this down to make it a bit easier to see what's going on. And so we've got that this is equal to negative one third multiplied by two plus x to the power of negative one. And we worked out that that was equal to this expansion here. Okay, so let's multiply it by that plus two over three multiplied by one minus x to the power of negative one, which we worked out was this expansion here, okay? So now all we're gonna do is expand that and then add the bits together. And remember, we're only going up to x squared because uh, we are only interested in the first three terms of this expansion. And so we get um, negative one third multiplied by half, well, that's negative one over six, okay? Subtract, uh, well, it's gonna be positive one over 12x, and then subtract one over 24 x squared plus, well, in fact, I'll tell you what, I'll make it approximately equal to, and we can forget about the plus dot, 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 because we're only interested in the first three terms. So then we're gonna add on to that two over three plus uh, two over three x plus two over three x squared. And now I'm gonna collect all of the like terms. So we've got negative one sixth plus two over three, and I'm just gonna work out all of these and then I'll cut back. Okay, so if we collect all of the like terms, we'll get that there. And so that's pretty much it. So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, like, subscribe and share and go over to my channel for tons more math tutorials. Thanks for watching.